Like who suffers? Who who is left holding the bag? It's not the elites. It's not yeah. Donald J. Trump. It's not it's not the Wall Street guys. Right? They're not holding the bag at the end of the day. Who's holding the bag? The people who yeah. who bought GameStop at five hundred dollars a share. They're going to be left holding the bag. So I think we're just gonna do a quick video. Uh, it's gonna be unscripted. Uh, and we're just going to talk about some of what's going on uh, in the market right now. So there's this whole GameStop uh, Wall Street bets thing going on. And I just wanted to yeah. get some of your thoughts on it. And, and maybe like we can think about what are the actual market dynamics um, and then what's the impact on people. Uh, so don't forget that we're not giving financial advice here. <laughs> so please don't take whatever we say as financial advice. We're just doing some analysis of what's happening in the market and, and, and what we see. Um, so let's start with what's happening. So what do you, what, what do you see happening, Sham, right now in the market? Um, well, different, the, the, the different stories here, right? But my biggest take is um it's a mixture of greed and spite mm. and that's a bad combination right like it's okay to be greedy but now they also want to screw the big guy so it's like the the combination is just just crazy and then people are piling on over the other uh the whole populism thing going on and and it's just like st one stupid decision after another stupid decision right <laughs> Yeah. Um, so let's break yeah. it down, I guess. Right. Because um, yeah. I think what happened was there was uh, there were actually particular firms, right, that that had made bets. Yeah. And the two kind of uh, instigators were uh, Melvin and um, Citron, right, who. Yeah. Uh, Citadel. It, it, it's unclear um, kind of whether they were, they were actually in short positions. I think uh, Melvin um, had disclosed that they had put options. Um, so that's a little bit different than a short. And I think, um, the leader of Citron did say that, uh, they did, they, they held short positions and then they covered it at 90 something dollars. So we can get through some of the dynamics as well. So what you're talking about here is, is basically there were this wall, this, uh, Reddit board, wall street bets, they, yeah. um, started targeting, uh, these firms because they thought, hey, um, they're shorting GameStop or, or GameStop, so let's make them lose money, right? That's the premise, I think. Um, so what's actually happening in the market, though? So I, I think I think there's there's um, a little bit of uh, um, uh, un, a little bit of just not there's 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 it's not clear. Um, People are understanding uh, what's actually happening when you're when you're buying stock or when you're shorting stock. So I think I wanted to talk through some of those dynamics and um, mm -hmm. and how that's impacting people, and and then go from that to how that's impacting the various players. Uh, so, in in a buy position, um, mm -hmm. let's uh, sometimes called long, right? Uh, usually in the markets, called uh, you're taking a long position. Um, uh, let's draw a profit chart, right? So um, you've got uh, a break even here, zero dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, this this vertical axis is profit, and um, this is this is profit, and then on on this lower side is loss, right? Uh, this horizontal axis is the price of the stock, right? So when you're buying a stock, let's say you buy it at uh, $20, right? It's $20 here. Um, you're going to make, uh, if, this, if the stock stays at $20, then you're going to make $0 because you, you can't, you, you're going to sell it at $20, right? You buy at $20, you sell it at $20, you're going to make $0 minus the commissions. We're not going to talk about commissions right now. Um, on the other hand, if the stock goes up to $40, then you're going to make twenty dollars, right? So here's the so here's the point, 
and that's how that's how this kind of chart works, right? Uh, the, so the higher you go, the higher the the price of the stock goes, right? The higher the price of the stock goes, the more money, the more profits you're going to make. On the other side, is the lower the price of the stock goes, the 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 more money you're going to lose. And what's happening here is when the stock mm. price goes to zero, which is this axis. Uh, you're going to lose 100% of your money. It's all gone, right? And so what? Sorry, what the what the redditors, the the uh, Wall Street bets folks are saying is, oh, we've noticed that some of these uh, uh, firms are taking a short position. So what does that look like? Let's draw out. Oops. Uh, try to make it more horizontal. Um, so this is a short position. Again, you've got profit on the uh, vertical axis, and you've got the price of the stock at the horizontal axis. So let's start again with um, uh, $20 and $40 here. Uh, and then $20, uh, $20. This is a loss. So let's say you short sell a stock at $20. If the stock stays at $20, then you're making no profit, right? But if the stock goes down in price, right? Mm -hmm. As as mm -hmm. the as the stock goes this way, the more profit yep. you're going to make because you you buy it for less and less. What's happening is I can buy it for uh uh let's say here is I can buy it for $10, right? I, so I've sold it for $20. I've bought it for $10. I've make this difference, right? Yep. And on the other hand, the higher that the stock price goes, the more you're going to lose. And in theory, yep. it's infinite, right? Yeah. It goes to whatever the, the as, as high as the price goes, your loss uh, approaches infinity, right? Yeah. Now, that's the premise, I think, of what the Wall Street bets uh, people are working with. But we know that in reality, here's the problem, right? Here's, here's the disconnect from reality. In reality, any investor with any kind of sophistication is not going to make an unhedged short, is not going to take an unhedged short position. Yeah. There's like... And there's no, there's no investor with any type of sophistication or any type of discipline that will not hedge their short position. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 called hedge funds for a reason, right? <laughs> exactly, it's called they're called <laughs> hedge funds for a reason. And so, so what we have here is actually, let's let's get more clear. This is an unhedged short. What's happening in reality? in reality is they're probably, if they are taking any shorts, if they're taking any short positions, they're taking a hedged short position. So let's draw that one out and see, and see what happens. Uh, and I just wanted to gut through this because I, I, I want to explain why, uh, uh, how the impact is on, the, on these institutional investors as the price goes up and what the impact is on, on normal people, on, on regular people. Um, so again, this is your profit. This is your loss. This is the price of the stock. So let's say I short sell at $20, right? So this is, again, this is $20. This is $40. Let's say I short sell the stock at $20. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simultaneously buy a call option. Put option. Uh, call. So the, so this this looks the same as a put option. But yeah, but I just want to make I just want to be clear. So so I'm going to buy an okay. option to basically buy the stock at a certain amount of money, right? So let's say I I I I buy a call option uh for $30. That means that I have the right to buy a stock at $30. It's going to cost me some money to buy this call option, right? So maybe let's say it, let's say it cost me five bucks, 
right? To buy this, to buy this uh, call option. Where I start is I, I actually, I sell, I sell, uh, I sell the 20 bucks. It costs me $5. So if, if I have to rebuy it at $20, I lose $5, right? Because I've already spent the money to buy the call option. And so when the price of the stock goes down, that's normal right when the price of the stock goes down that's normal i i will i will make money right um i just make five dollars less than what i would have in in this above scenario but if when the stock price goes up um at this 30 dollar mark because i have a call option uh what's going to happen is that as the price goes up i'm going to continue losing money until it hits 30 dollars Right. And then because I have the right to exercise this option to exert to buy the stock at thirty dollars, my loss is going to be stopped. I will lose. Uh, what is this? Um, Fifteen dollars. Right. Fifteen dollars here, I think. Uh, because I lose the ten dollars uh, from the price difference and then I lose the five dollars because of the purchase of the of the call option. And. I will not lose any more money that this line is horizontal until infinity. Yeah. So as the price approaches infinity, my loss stays at $15. Yeah. And so what's happening now as, uh, as, as the, as the stock price goes up, right. Is you're not actually hurting these hedge funds. You're not hurting these institutional investors because they they would have hedged their shorts, right? You might hurt a few a few uh, investors who are less sophisticated, yeah. right? But you're not going to hurt the, the the sophisticated investors who are hedging their bets. Yeah. So so the just to clarify, a short position and a long position on a call option yeah. will be a put option. So yes, so right. so this is this is functionally equivalent to a put option. Yeah, uh, a long long position on a put option. Yeah. Yes. So a uh, uh, yeah. So a short short call is the same as a long put. Right. Um. So just to be like crystal clear, you don't have to worry. Like we don't have to worry about the terminology too too much. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to the the, yeah. the 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 concept really here is their losses are capped. And so when GameStop, right, when the GameStop stock, right, goes from, like, goes from $20, right, to $90 to, you know, et cetera, et cetera, to $500, right? Doesn't matter. It This part doesn't matter, yeah. right? They've already... They've already hasn't have have an have an option to exit at a lower price point. You're not going to make them lose unlimited amount of money. Yep. And I think this part has has uh, I I obviously we're both working so we can't consume like news media that much um, during our workday. But but from from the little from from the cover that I have seen, this has been hugely underreported. And so. Uh, the, the, yeah. the Twitter posts and the Reddit posts right now, they're all saying, yeah, let's make Wall Street eat it. Let's make whatever. Let's stick it to the man. The problem is <laughs> they've already yeah. <laughs> they have the exit. You're not making them lose that much money. And so yeah. what's going to happen is uh, remember here, we've got the we've got the we've got the long we've got the long position. Most investors in in order, so most of the uh, Wall Street buyer investors, in order to push the stock prices up, they're taking long positions. They're buying the stock, and if you're buying the stock yeah. at uh, if you're buying the stock at twenty dollars, and you're losing twenty dollars a stock a, a share, fine, right? Like you know it's limited, but it, the problem comes when you go and you see like five hundred dollars a share. When people are, then your then your loss, right? Your your corresponding loss here is also five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars a share. People are we're we're seeing people tweet about borrowing money to buy into yeah, it, GameStop. Yeah, I I I I read some of those redditors. They were saying like 
they were refinancing their mortgage to to buy GameStop and and AMC, which is just crazy. Yeah. So now you've got people <laughs> like using the equity that's in their homes to to buy GameStop, and and uh, what you do with your money is up to you. Again, we're not we're not making financial advice. We're not giving financial advice here. Um, but the but your potential for loss is is a lot bigger right um so 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 the impact on 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 melvin and on citron actually we we know what the impact on citron is the the leader of citron said um they covered their shorts at uh 90 at 90 something dollars 90 something so it's done it's resolved they're gone they're out there's no they're not they're, yeah. they're not losing any more money same thing. Same thing. Melvin to close their position on Monday or something. Exactly. So, Melvin closed their positions. They're gone. Yeah. They're out. You're not. You're not. You're not screwing anyone anymore. You're not. You're not actually hurting any any of these hedge funds that you that you think you're hurting. Yeah. The the other thing is like there's lot of lot of scammy like fake news and like misinformation, disinformation, all kinds of stuff going on, right? It's just like a bunch of people trying to scam each other and and the whole Reddit board, I've been like reading it for for, for the last couple of days, it's just an echo chamber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no rational. Yeah. It's like just like that. Uh, they'll look at the graph. They will just make up something. Looking at the trend, they'll say, "Oh, it's a star." Mm-hmm. So now you are going to see the next break. How can you like make that with a with a with just a trend, right? Like yeah, that's actually a really good that's actually a really good point because like let's let's think about this, right? What is because this leads to this leads to at the end of the day, what's going to happen in six to twelve months, right? Yeah. Um, what's the value? Of a share, present value of future cash flows. Two. Yeah. So it's the value. So what we're taught in B school, right? Yeah. <laughs> so let's think about this. It's the value of future cash flows. Present value. Uh, yes. Cash flows. Uh, present value. So, um. Let's let's translate that to to you know uh, everyday language. It's basically um, uh, the value of all of my future profits, right? So so there's there's an actual formula, right? So it's it's future profits, and because there's a formula, there's an NPV formula of of future profits, and you stick numbers in. Um, the I, I guess the mainstream understanding is that oh it, it seems like a it seems like something that's quantifiable that's easy to measure that you can just define what the value of a company is yeah but that's not the case is it yeah no no they, they just they just use a multiplier <laughs> <laughs> and really you, you've got a lot of assumptions going into the going into the calculation of the profits right. I'm going to assume a different thing, set of things than, than you're going to assume, right? I'm going to assume people, uh, you know, for example, after this pandemic, I might assume that people are going to go back to the malls. They're going to go back to GameStop. They're going to keep trading in their used games. Um, they're going to keep buying uh, physical copies of games. And you might make the assumption that, hey, people are no longer going to buy physical copies. They're going to buy digital copies. And so the valuation, that's the difference in valuation. I might value game, games, GameStop at 50 bucks right because i expect their futures their future profits to be higher right and if you expect their future profits to be lower you might value them at 10 bucks yep right and that's what makes the trading possible and that's and and when you're uh when when companies are shorting a stock yep. right all they're saying is i think your future it's profits lower, is going to be lower i'm going to take this position yep yep yeah, you're basically overvalued right now. Yeah, you're overvalued. I think I think your future profits are going to be lower than they are at 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 the current point. Um. And so what's so the 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 problem with this right now is, uh, the the price of of Game Stock, the price of Game Stock of GME at whatever hundred it is now, right? Like I'm going to just assume like three hundred bucks. Yeah. It includes 
it includes uh, the present value of your future cash flows, the, the future profits. But it also includes a bunch of baggage, right? Like it, it, it includes the, the, uh, the screw you to Wall Street, right? Yeah. It includes like um, whatever other uh, resentment, right? It includes greed, right? The, the, yeah. All the factors that you talked about. Um, uh, and so what happens when these three go away? It goes back to $10. It's going to go back to $10. And so all of these people, all these normal people, normal everyday people who have borrowed money to buy GameStop at, at $500, $400, whatever the price is that, that they bought it at, yeah. are in six to 12 months, when, when, these, when people lose interest, when the, when the attention is gone, when these things are gone, right? It's gonna, they're gonna go from $300 to $10, and they're, they're going to have a huge debt that, that, they'd ha- that they have to so, pay off. So, so, so I totally agree. Um, I was just talking to another friend of mine. Mm-hmm. The argument he was making is, um, you know, like I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I, I love Tesla, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, so do you think Tesla is overvalued? Mm-hmm. And my question is, it doesn't matter, or my answer is, it doesn't matter whether it's overvalued or not. You cannot compare Tesla with GameStop. Mm-hmm. Tesla is a tech company. They are, they are potentially, they are going to change the way everything goes. They can even, they are redefining space travel. Mm-hmm. They're doing so many other things that cannot be measured by traditional instruments. Mm-hmm. If you're just looking by earnings, yes, they are overvalued, but that's not how the market is pricing them, right? And they have a trend. Yeah. Now, Game, GameStop, for the last five or six years, have been perf- making no money. Mm-hmm. They were hemorrhaging money. This is not the first year um, hedge funds have milked them out dry, mm-hmm. right? They, they already brought them down from like 50, 60, all the way to 10, mm-hmm. year over year. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing in this company and they're ready to go bankrupt. And you're just hyping this up just to spite Wall Street. It's not the same apples to apples comparison. Yeah. And it boils right. down to future profits, right? Like, yeah. like if, you, if you believe, like you said, if you believe Tesla is going to change the game, they're going to start um, electrifying different, different uh, modes of transportation and they're going to be the, 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 the first mover and they're going to have all of these market advantages. Um, yeah. Versus GameStop, which again sells physical games, brick and mortar. Yeah, in brick and mortar, uh, do, does that have an expected uh, a high expected future profits? It, it, it's a completely different. It's a completely different conversation, right? So there, so yeah. the, the future profits of Tesla, you can you can argue whether it should be at um, how much is it right now hovering? It's like eight hundred ish something. Whatever, whatever the price is, right? Eight hundred. You can argue again. You can have a difference of opinion whether it's worth you know x amount or y amount, right? But objectively, uh, if you look at if you look at the potential future profits, Tesla is is much better positioned in in, in their in their uh, business model than GameStop is. So the other big dynamic that that we're seeing right now is. Broker brokerages like Robinhood, TD Ameribank, whatever, they started to restrict trading. Yeah. And you've yeah. got AOC and Ted Cruz um, on the same boat here. Like it, it's uh, it's it's like a unicorn, right? You'll never you'll never you'll never see it again. Who yeah, who who would have thought like greed is the ultimate unifier, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but but this is this is this is a normal thing they do. Like when they see uh, investors on their platform taking so much risk, like on your margin account when your exposure is like whack, like totally whack, they will do this. They will either sell your positions or will stop trading. Right, and and it's not just um, Robinhood who just uh, delisted uh, AMC GameStop. Yeah. There are a whole bunch of other platforms too. But people were upset at Robinhood because 80% of the people 
who invested in this in the in this thing was were all like robin hood investors yeah all small scale investors so now it's like now it's gone into like a whole new conspiracy theory of its own right exactly um, exactly so is, like let's go back let's go back to this right let's go back to this again remember this this chart up here the wisbeers are up here they're the ones taking the long dip positions in the yeah. in the uh, uh, short call or long put in the hedge in the he in this hedged short position, this is where Wall Street is, right? If you want to if you want to like kind of bunch everyone is in. So no matter how high the price goes, it actually does not impact Wall Street anymore whatsoever. So so restricting trading on the platforms does not help or hurt Wall Street at all because they've already resolved at at a, a, a capped amount of loss. <laughs> what it does yeah. do is it stops more and more people making stupid mistakes. Years and people who are normal people who are trying to jump on this on this GameStop uh, deal, yeah. making a mistake and, and mortgaging their house, drawing out the home equity of their house to buy the stock and and then and then GameStop the stock is is eventually going to uh, go down because their, their future profits not looking rosy. Yeah. Right. And so the only argument that I can see that, that uh, you might keep people on the platforms is they actually expect this sentiment, right? These sentiments to stay around indefinitely. And so the, the, the price of GameStop will be, will be artificially inflated or, or will be inflated sure. because it'll keep including these values. But that's not sustainable, though. Like... <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what the market analysts, when they say there's no market yeah. fundamentals to yeah. the price of GameStop right now, that's what they're saying, that the price yeah. is inflated by all of these sentiments, right? Yeah, like valid or not, I, right. I I don't want to comment. I don't want to get into the, the 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 politics of this. I don't. I have so let's let's make the declaration. I have no, I hold no uh, direct positions in GameStop or any or any yeah. or AMC or any of these. I don't know if you do. I I, I do have BlackBerry, but that's okay. A different so story. that's a you know you you bought BlackBerry like a number of years ago. They're a Canadian company, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So so yeah. we we actually have um as little. <laughs> Uh, skin in the game as you can have in these companies, right? Uh, so we have we have no skin in the game, and so we don't really care one way or the other if the if the prices go up or go down. Um, I'm almost all invested in in index funds, so I really don't care. Um, and so, so that's 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 at the end of the day, that's what the market analysts are saying. They're saying. There's no market fundamentals because your future profits is going to be low unless unless GameStop makes a fundamental change in the way that they that they do business in their business model. Um, yeah. You're not going to sell more physical brick and mortar stores, and this these sentiments are not sustainable. So at yeah. at some point, like the meme is not going to be funny anymore. And and the other thing I wanted to bring up is like when I was talking to other friends of mine. They they immediately said that all all this time Wall Street and all these big institutions were screwing with the retail instead of the regular people, and now these guys changed the game, and now you are calling them out that what they are doing is stupid, right? Um, they just they just say that like oh we like it's just it's just hating on the little guy right mm -hmm. hating on them for making a stupid mistake like all that stuff, but historically they have been like taking ex advantage or exploiting them mm -hmm. which may or may not be true but that's not the point here yeah the the point here is it's irrational uh to be doing something like this and and the end result is going to be inevitable right like yeah like you are going to get whacked so it's it's the inevitability that we are talking about right yeah and and yeah so it's not about whether whether Wall Street plays fair or like there's there's this morality or none of that stuff. Yeah. Um yeah. just based on pure numbers, it's it's just highly rational. Yeah. Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. 
uh, without even talking about like our interest, our vested interest is we don't want to see people go broke, right? Like you and I, you just came off of a board meeting for a nonprofit. You and I are both on boards for nonprofits. We help our community and we care about, we care about people. And our vested interest in is we don't want to see people go broke. And so what, what's happening, we want to explain this in a way that shows people, hey, you know, let's take you at your word, right? You think you're, you're trying to like stick it to Wall Street, you're trying to, you're trying to send a message. Okay, so what's gonna happen? What, what happens when you actually start buying the stock? Well, this is what happens. You actually don't really hurt Wall Street because they're hedged. They take a, they take, they take a loss, it's finite. But as the higher that that the price goes, the more that these uh, Wisby Wisby folks and 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 folks who are jumping on the on the um, on the bandwagon, the, the more that they buy it, the more and more and more and more risk that they're taking. Yeah. And that's what yeah. really concerns us, right? Yeah, we, it's like it's like yeah, it's like cutting off your nose to spite the face, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it, it's just you're just not going to you're just not going to succeed at at hurting Wall Street by doing this. Uh, you might again, you might hurt some investor that are less sophisticated or that got lazy. Right. They might have forgotten to hedge their short. Right. But if you're if if you have any discipline, if you like we are not traders, you and I are not investment bankers. We are not in the industry. We took like two finance courses right, in <laughs> yeah. our master's program. And, 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 and the two of us already know it's, this is a very simple strategy to cap your loss and they're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they, 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 they would, I, I have no doubt they would have like sophisticated strategy to like, to, uh, to, 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 to hedge their, hedge their, uh, losses. Right. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised. If they immediately reverse their position and made money out of this, oh yeah, for sure, um, right, <laughs> right. It's just not reported, yeah, right. And now you can like if at, if it's at five hundred bucks or four hundred bucks or whatever, like the volatility is crazy right now. So whatever it's yeah. trading at tomorrow morning, right? Yeah, they can short it and they'll still make a ton of money. So ironically, yeah, exactly. ironically, this has become a huge transfer of wealth. It's going to be a huge transfer of wealth from normal everyday people who jumped on the bandwagon. To Wall Street. To Wall Street, it's gonna it's going to accomplish the exact opposite of what people think that they're accomplishing. Yeah. Yep. And I I think that's really unfortunate. And and I, you know, uh, trying trying to stay trying to stay relatively neutral. Uh, we have again we have no vested interest. We just don't want people to go bankrupt and and mortgage their houses. Um, because yeah. we've seen. We've seen, like, we're we're a little bit old enough. We're old enough to see the dot com bubble, right? And we've seen the the losses that people. Two thousand, yeah, and we all watched the Big Shot movie. So <laughs> we all watched the Big Shot. <laughs> yeah, and my like my yeah. my parents are old enough to you know the Hong Kong stock market when it crashed. People literally jumping off buildings. Um, we don't want that to happen. We hope it doesn't happen, and um, uh, we really. All I can, I, yeah. I think all I can say here is the, I hope this stops. Like, I hope this madness stops because you're not, you're not hurting anyone. No, nobody, like no, Wall Street's not being hurt by this. Hurt yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Only the people who are, yeah. who are getting in the game the, are being hurt. The other, other big conversation now, uh, at least a couple of guys have, have brought, brought up with me is like, why why is why is short selling even legal why is wall street being allowed to short sell i think even elon musk um tweeted out today like you cannot uh sell your house you don't own you cannot sell your house uh you sell your car you don't own but you can sell a stock you don't own why is this scam being allowed or something like that so now like all these people are um on the train like so Wall Street can bend the rules to shady shit, yeah. but we cannot do anything like that. Like, uh, where's the fairness? But, like, why do you, th or, or maybe it's a question, is, is shorting uh, uh, unethical, immoral? What's the, what's the morality aspect on that? 
like yeah i mean let's why do people get let's talk get about the morality about of elon musk saying yeah. this saying this stuff right yeah <laughs> this First, guy yeah. so this guy <laughs> This guy has been a, a, a thorn in in the SEC side, right? He obviously yeah, the whole private has thing, a yeah. vested interest, right? He obviously has a vested interest. If if um, if uh, uh, investment firms start uh, shorting Tesla on mass, that's gonna that's literally hitting his pocketbook. He has a vested interest. Um, so uh, it's gonna be interesting how the SEC deals with his comments um because he's he's i don't know if it's manipulating i don't know what it is but uh he obviously has a vested interest and he's trying to um influence public thinking public discourse um so in terms of like the actual question on shorting stocks well what elon Musk said was just false it's it's actually illegal to do a naked short uh, a naked short is um uh, short selling a stock without first confirming that it exists, right? So what what is what is short what is shorting a stock? Shorting a stock is you're borrowing a share. You're borrowing a share. So I'm borrowing a share from you, Shyam, right? Let's say you own uh, a share in in GameStop. I'm borrowing your GameStop share and I'm selling it at the current price of tw of twenty dollars. And basically, I'm hoping I'm I'm crossing my fingers and I'm hoping that uh, GameStop shares are going to go down to $10 and, and I make a little bit yeah. of profit out of it uh, so that I can yeah. buy the share back at $10. I can give you back your share yeah. that I borrowed. And then yeah. I just make the, the, the keyword $10. is borrowed. The keyword is borrowed, right? You can, you did not make shit up. The keyword borrowed. is borrowed. I did not make anything yeah. up. So naked shorting, not making sure that this, yeah. that this share exists, um, that is illegal. Yeah, it is illegal. exactly people people don't get that right yeah. they think like shorting is this illegal practice it is very similar to you uh, uh very similar you're going to the bank borrowing money mortgage and buying a house yeah. or or getting a loan and 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 buying a car it just like in in the world of stock market you borrow funds to sell a stock and then buy it back and take the Profits up. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm borrowing just like, and and this is where Elon Musk was disingenuous, right? I can borrow anything of yours, Shyam. I can borrow that hat that's on your head, right? And sell it for 20 bucks. And then I go to a flea market, right? And I buy the same type of hat, let's say the same quality, whatever, um, for 10 bucks. And I give you back your hat. All you'd say is, thanks, Eugene. Thanks for bringing me back my hat. And I'm going to, and I'm going to say, thanks for the $10 because you know, I made ten dollars off of that exchange, but it, it's the exact same concept. So there's nothing illegal in that, right? Um, and like I said, the 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 the, the practice of naked shorting, of um, not making sure that the share exists, that's illegal. If the share that's does not illegal. exist, yeah. you can't borrow something yeah. that that doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I I can't just come and tell you and say that hey, I have. 100 Tesla shares, give me 800,000 or 8,000, whatever that yeah. is, right? Uh, when I don't have 100 Tesla shares exactly. in my portfolio. Exactly. I need to make sure I I have, I have yeah. can borrow it, that those shares exist, that I've borrowed it, and then I can share those, sell those shares to you, right? Yeah. Um, so that's why it's that's why it's not illegal, because I've I've borrowed something that's real. I'm, I've borrowed something that exists, and I'm selling it to, to, to someone. And then I just buy it back later. Mm -hmm. So yeah. all the transactions include real property in that sense, right? As yeah. opposed to just, yeah, just um, imaginary property. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like some of the some of the hatred and vitriol m might be justified, but then like there's, it's just a lot of misinformation, right? Yeah. Like there's stuff about like how uh, not even knowing how basic stock market works and 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 stuff about like sharding and all these conspiracy theories, and then like mix it with greed, uh, yeah, you have a very bad combination. It's uh, yeah, it's a recipe for disaster, right? Yeah. Um, and it and it is it is taking on a very conspiratorial tone, right? The narrative yeah. is taking a very conspiratorial tone. Yeah, that is bad, yeah. Um, and so it just reminds me. It, it just reminds me of the Capitol riots. 
Yeah, right. Exactly. Like it's not it's not violence, and it's it's like the nature is different. But yeah, but I funny story. I I I brought this up with another group of friends. I was talking, and they were like, "No, no, no, no! You cannot bring it up because that's terrorism. You cannot equate this over that. That is like based on some idealism." But my point is like, no, it's 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 idealism here too. It's like the same populism st- uh, stuff. The only additional thing here is there is greed added to it. But mm. it's the same uh, populist mentality is to like give it to the mid- uh, big guy, right? Like like all that stuff. Yeah, stick it to stick it to the yeah. man. Um, yeah, like like uh like the anti elitism yeah yeah um, exactly and like trying to trying to capture trying to capture our house right our money our house uh so it's it's the same it's the same type of mentality um and it 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 it, it is different like we we got to grant it is different in the sense that this is nothing that anyone is doing here is illegal right unlike unlike the capital riots nothing that anyone is doing here is illegal Everyone's acting in a, in completely legal ways. The short sellers are acting legally. Uh, the the uh, whiz are, are are acting legally. Um, yeah. And uh, even the even the brokerages that are restricting trading are acting legally. Yeah. They're acting in the best interest of the normal people, the regular people. Yeah. They don't see it. <laughs> um, yeah. And because there's a there's a fundamental misunderstanding of how markets work and how and 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 how. Um, uh, how how buying and selling shares works, yeah. um, and so so I mean that 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 is like granted that is a difference. Capital rights were yeah. obviously illegal, obviously terrorist activity. This is everything's legal, yeah. but it's it's still the same. Like who suffers? Who who is left holding the bag? It's not the elites. It's not yeah. Donald J. Trump. It's not it's not the Wall Street guys. Right, they're not holding the bag at the end of the day. Who's holding the bag? The people who went up the steps of of the Capitol, the people who yeah. who bought GameStop at five hundred dollars a share, they're going to be left holding the bag. Yeah, uh, and and it's just it's just it's sad. it's just sad. <laughs> like it's just a sad situation. Yep. We hope that that yep. doesn't continue, but you know. Yep. Um, it'll be interesting to see. What actually happens in the in 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 the coming months, um, but uh, we obviously hope for uh, 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 not even a not even a good outcome at this point. I, I just hope for like not too bad of an it outcome. Just yeah. Right. That that okay. is not disastrous. Okay. So that was that was a good chat. Let's um, yeah. We'll talk again next content. time. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. See ya. Okay.